the purpose of this techniques clinic today is I'm going to try and keep you out of trouble for this season. I've worked with a lot of partners, seen a lot of things over my career. I'm not going to go into my resume. You don't need to hear my resume. I've talked to other people about me. You know my resume. That's the first thing, though. When you're meeting with your partner in the parking lot, you get there roughly a half hour before game time. That's what it is for high school. For those of you that are thinking about doing college, you better have a wide open schedule. You've got to be there a minimum of an hour before the game. Travel time, start putting all the numbers together. Works out at about $15, $12 an hour by the time you're through. Oh yeah, great fee, I'm a college umpire. I went through that whole route. There's a three-letter word that comes to mind. EGO. Either high school umpire, college umpire. It can be a very detrimental thing. So when you meet your partner in the parking lot for the first time, he doesn't need to hear your resume. Your team blue. You meet there a half hour before the game, Understood, things can happen, traffic, you get out of work late, okay? Call your partner, make sure you have your cell phone number to your partner before every game. My suggestion would be either call the morning of or call the night before. Get in touch with your partner so you know who you're working with, you know what you're doing, plate, base. What are we wearing? Could it be light blue time? Are you wearing Red undershirts, navy undershirts, no undershirts. You should be wearing an undershirt. Anyway, these are things you need to do. Now, once you get to the park, not pre-game. Pre-game is very important, especially there's a lot of new faces here I haven't seen before. I haven't been back on the board for a few years. Been up in Rockland working with those guys. Did a lot of college ball. So I see a lot of new faces here in Westchester that I've never worked with you guys before. So if I'm meeting you a half hour before, sometimes a half hour really isn't enough time before the game to go over everything. So points of emphasis that you want to deal with is coverage areas. What are you doing with men on base? And don't be afraid to go over the simple situation. Man on first, what are we doing? Man on first and third, what are we doing? First and second, less than two outs, what do we got? What are the signals we're going to use? Okay? And if you've had any funny plays, any funny situations that have happened during the season, last season, any time in your career that have caused you to like sit there and, oh my God, what is it in the rule book? What do I do now? The biggest thing is if you have a cluster, if you can't explain it, if you can't call it, that's why you need to read the rule book. Okay, this year making part one not mandatory, I guarantee half of the people in this room, probably more, didn't do that test. Probably didn't read the rule book. The way you're supposed to do it, read the case book, then read the rule book. You already got an example. Now you got the reference and you know the rule. Chapter upon chapter upon chapter. Two weeks I'm done with the book. Okay? I dump a lot. So anyway, the other thing is when you're doing that pregame, look at your buddy. Okay? We're doing rating systems amongst ourselves. Does it look like the guy slept with his clothing? Does he have it rolled up in a ball in the car? Because I guarantee you, you don't look sharp, you don't look snap creases and everything else. You are going to have problems at the upper level with the better coaches. Because they know already. Here comes one guy, snap creases, the shoes are polished, nice hat, it's creased, he looks good, and the other guy's got wrinkled pants. Guys that are three, four, five years in a group, six years in a group, ten years in a group, may not know all the coaches. I wouldn't try that. So you want to look your best. Not real quick, 
Chest protectors, spend all your money on your chest protector. You can live and die by a chest protector. All the Wilson stuff, All Star came out with a new, uh, a new chest protector. It's about 150 bucks, 160 bucks. Wilson has several models. They're in the $150 range. A lot of guys say the mask. You know what? You can get a real good mask for 40 bucks. But you're not going to get a good chest protector for 40 bucks. You might find one on eBay. That's about 10 years old. We're packed with a flush. Spend the money on the chest protector. Okay? All right, let me move on. For the purposes of three man mechanics later on in the season, I'd like to do those. I mean, guys that you've worked with for years, and you may have your own signals between you, that's fine. But if you're working with a newer guy or a guy you've never worked with before, I'd like to see the same signals used by everybody in the group. Just hold this for me for a second. Thank you. If you're behind the plate and you're facing your partner, you've got a man on first, one out. So you're going to signal to your partner, who should be in B. Point to your left shoulder, <laughs> which means we're rotating. If you're the plate guy and you're pointing to your left shoulder, that means you're going left up towards third base. Keeps everybody on the same page. If you're on the bases, you're pointing to your left shoulder to reply. So always point to your left shoulder. One out, no outs, two outs. Okay. Two outs at the plate, time to play. Not what time is it, time to play. Okay. No outs, infield fly, one out, infield fly. Those are the basic hand signals that everybody should use in the room. This when it comes time to sectionals, there's no problems. Everybody's on the same page. If you're the plate guy, always put the ball back in play. Two ways. One, Keep the game moving and put a ball back in play. Don't fudge around waiting for the catcher. He's going to get a ball over there. You throw one in, get that one back from the catcher. Keep the game rolling. Okay? The other thing is putting the ball into play with your partner. And what that means is you just had a foul ball. I don't care if there's nobody on base. Base is loaded. One man on base. Point to the pitcher, play. Get in the habit, even with nobody on. Put the ball back in play. Because I guarantee you, if you don't get in the habit of that, and I've seen it happen, there's going to be a pickoff play somewhere. Play guy didn't put the ball back in play. Louis, my partner on the bases, and I didn't put the ball back in play. And we've got a whacker over at first base. Diving back into the bat. If Louie does anything, he should just stand there and say, guys, ball's not in play yet. Although some guys may just assume the ball's in play, which now you've just made an ass out of you and me. Because I didn't put the ball back in play, and I just screwed my partner. Now i got coaches yelling at me because he made a call. You don't want to do that. Even with nobody on base, put the ball back in play. Plate guys. Get your butt out from behind the plate. Don't be a spectator. Ball's hit anywhere, and you're supposed to either go up back door first base, cut across the mound, possibility your partner's going out, or you're going up to the library third base. There's nothing to say you can't cross the plate. After the catcher clears, and you're up to the edge of the grass or a couple of feet on the grass, you can left turn to third or left turn to first or keep on going to second. Don't stand behind the plate. Get out from behind the plate and help your partner out. Help yourself out, because you're hustling. Trust me, coaches see that. Winning coaches or losing coaches. If you're hustling on the field, they'll see that. It keeps you out of a lot of arguments. Stay focused. You stay focused on the game, and I don't care if you're doing a modified game, you're doing a little league game, you're doing sectionals, finals. Consider it game seven of the World Series for that team that day. And 
concentrate through the whole game. I've done it. I've screwed up. I was in Florida spring training in the A position behind first base. Game's boring. It's like the fifth inning. Ohio and somebody were playing. Ohio Silesian was playing somebody. Um, yeah. 10 o'clock. Looks great over in the stand. My partner's already asked me once, did he go? I'm still looking in the stand. <laughs> yeah, she's good looking. <laughs> great, did he go? Whoops, I heard my name. <laughs> what? Great, did he go? Well, I didn't see it. How can you call? Okay. But guess what? I got caught with my pants down. Never happened again. Stay focused like it's game seven for that team, that day, both teams. Give them a fair shot. Two man mechanics. Infield fly rule. Base umpire never leaves the infield. You don't go chasing outfield ball. You stay in the infield, you've got the V from the right and left fielder in. Plate umpire, he's got the outfielders to the line. Those are his calls. You're inside the middle, you've got the V in the middle. Something to go over in pregame. The other thing is, whether you're base umpire or plate umpire, you've got a particular situation especially if it's going to be an outfield ball, you need to pause, read, and react to the situation. If you're in A, sometimes a line drive might not be a trouble ball. It might be a simple catch. So you need to hesitate for that one little second. So what if you're a second late or a second and a half late going out to make sure that he's going to make a catch that's below his knee? Wow, so you're not 10 feet further out? Better to be safe than sorry. Okay? Cans of corn? Don't go out on a can of corn. Especially on an 85, 90 degree day, your boy's behind a plate sweating. Don't make him work more than he has to. You can come in, he can take that can of corn. Trouble ball, that's a different situation. In the gap, to the wall, coming forward, diving catch, over the shoulder. Those are things you're going to go out on. Especially your two-man mechanics in uh, position A, that's from the center fielder over. That's all you. From the center fielder going left, that's the plate up part. That's his call. You're in A position, when you do go out, be demonstrative when you're out there. Foul ball, push the refrigerator. Foul, put your hands up. It's not waving your arms or anything else. Come up, push the refrigerator. Foul. Everybody in the whole ballpark know. You don't have to make the big call if it's 20 feet beyond the line. You can just point, foul ball, and then put your hands up. But if it's something that's a screamer right near the line, you want to let everybody in the ballpark and everybody down by the parkway know what the call is. Okay, even if you got to take that extra second, take the extra second, replay it in your head to make the call. Better to make the right call a second later than the wrong call. I kind of touched on the rule book. Sometimes there's literal interpretations of the rule. Sometimes there is what we call the spirit of the rule. Uh, you're not going to come out with tape measures if a kid jumps out of the baseline on a rundown. That's kind of a you know, general rule. There's no, it's a step and a reach for the defensive player. If he's beyond that, he's out of the baseline. Literal rule on the baseline, though, is wherever the runner establishes itself, Going to that next base or going back to a base, it's a straight line. So if he's, if this is the line between, say, second and third, and he's way out here, and he's going back to second, it's not back there into the, it's from here straight line to the back. Okay? That's the literal part of the rule. 
Those are things you got to know. Things that'll keep you out of trouble. When you're dealing with coaches, there's a lot of scenarios, a lot of situations I could go over. But for a general rule, until they cross the line, you got to be humble. Hold your temper, hold your tongue. They have positioning uh, situations where they kind of give you an evaluation. If you're the type of person that like sits there like this when a coach comes to talk to you, you're supposedly giving the impression that you don't care. That's what they say. They say the proper way is to either have your hands behind your back. What I do is one of two ways. If I know I'm going to be in a hot box, or we're going to have a major discussion, let me back up. If it's going to be just a concern of a call, and we're going to discuss something, I'll keep my hands in my back pocket. Fingers, kind of like this. Just to keep my hands down, or you can keep them at your side. If you're the type of person that uses your hands a lot when you talk, put them in your pocket. Grab your pocket so you're kind of holding on to something so your hands don't flail around. But if you know you're going to have a heated argument, I kind of like to bite my lip. Keep my mouth shut because anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. So anything you say to that coach in the discussion, that's going to be a heated discussion, or just going to remember every single word you said. So what I like to do, I put one hand this way, one hand like this, and what do you got, coach? Put my, my hands and my fingers over my mouth so I can't talk. Just let them go. Let them go. Give them all the rope he wants. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. If it comes to an end, great. Okay, conversation over. Coach, you had your say. We move on. However, if he crosses the line, you don't have to be like the guys on TV with the big pole. All you got to do is up. And that's it. Now, how to handle that? As the other umpire, once your partner dumps somebody, you have to become the rodeo clown. You now have to get between him and the coach, and get the coach off the field. Don't touch him. He's the kind of guy, okay, Joe, come on. Have you said you bump him? You got to By the way, who's your replacement? Who's the assistant coach? Who's going to be the head coach now? You might want to get that info for your partner. You don't want your partner talking to the coach now at this point. But get him the best way you can off the field. That's a good partner. Okay? It's only Team Blue. There's only two of you guys out there, man. And it could be a hell day, or it could be a great day. Uh, let's see. If you play guys, a lot of guys like to call strike three and turn their head. Not a good idea with two men. You don't know if that batter and that catcher have past history or not. You don't know if they just attained history and talked to each other and all of a sudden the batter whacks the catcher. You look at this like this is going on over there. Look at Joe, how do I see it? When you make your strike three call, try and keep staring forward so you can still see the action. That's a critical thing. <coughs> when you want to talk to your partner, A lot of guys like to socialize between themselves. They may go down and talk to each other every other inning. Nah, not a good idea. You have a major situation, you have a whacker, and that same inning your partner wants to talk to you. No. Talk about that play two innings later. Even if your partner does not want to talk about that play, I guarantee you the coach that had the play go against them, oh, what are you talking about, a blue? You sure you got it right? 
You don't want to invite that kind of trouble during the game. You talk to your partner in the parking lot before the game. Normally, I talk to one of my partners maybe once. I'll meet up. Mr. the signal. I need to talk halfway up the line between any. Maybe I'll talk to my partner once. Maybe I won't. But never talk after a play in that same inning. You want to talk about that play or just kind of, did I get that right? Was I in the right spot? Talk about it like two or three innings later. If not, save it for the partner. Stay focused. Make sure you're watching everybody touch the bases. I've kind of watched games, observed some games last year. Not here with Westchester guys, but summer guys. Most of the coaches and players don't watch what's going on. They're kind of watching the play. But if you've got a smart coach, especially a a salty old dog, we'll call it, that's been around for quite a while. He's not watching the play. He's watching those guys touch the bases. Especially if they miss one, or he thinks they missed it. You're not watching. You're watching the play, but you're not watching the touch. God help you. You're going to be in a world of shit, I guarantee you at that point. Salty old dog. He'll cross the line, and you're going to end up dumping. You stay on top of it. Greg, I got that call. They appeal second. He's safe, no problem. He caught the front edge of the dish, front edge of the bag. What's he going to say? He's 120 feet away, 150 feet away. You're 60 feet. Yeah, I saw him touch the corner of the bag. He got it. Some guys do it, some guys don't. Some guys call ball four, take your base, and point. Not a good idea. Ball four, strike three. The other thing is, I'm one of those guys I can just use the count. Three, two. I don't say three balls, two strikes, two outs. I'm not a scoreboard. Keep it short and sweet. Stay on top of your stuff. Stay focused. Uh, <laughs> appealing to your partner. Left hand. Did he go? Or you can say, Jim, did he go? That's it. No right hand. Right hand means strike. Check swing, strike, arguments. Stay focused. While you're making your calls, don't make an indication as to where the ball was, if it's a ball call. Don't say ball inside, ball outside, ball up, ball down. Just it's a ball. Keep you out of trouble. Some of you guys like to have watches. During the game. I'm a big fan if you need a clock or something, get a stopwatch. That's got the clock option on it. Keep it in your pocket. Don't wear a watch on your wrist. Don't wear sweatpants. That's for players. It's not for umpires. Two other things. deal a lot with ratings in this group. You as a base umpire have your responsibility pre-game. Plate umpire has his responsibility pre-game. And I'm not talking at the plate. I'm talking before the game when you come on the field. Sometimes you're at a new field. Sometimes you're at a field that like all of a sudden they can't use the high school field today. They're at some obscene location that looks like a cow pasture, walk the field. Walk the field for five minutes. Take a look at some obscure set, you know, parts of the field that may get, keep you out of trouble because you already know about it. Don't schmooze with the coaches. They 
know who you are. Just by the way you're dressed, they should know who you are. Okay? You don't have to sit there, hey Joe, how's it going today? How's your season going? No. Hey, how are you? Get to the plate, do your thing, start the game, get out of it. I lied, I have two more things, really three. Don't linger after the game. No reason to talk to coaches again after the game is over. A winner or loser, whether they're happy, sad, and different, get the hell out of there. And you and your partner go together. You come on the field together, and you leave together. One of you just doesn't leave, and the other guy's still talking to the coach. No, no, no. I've had that happen before, too. I don't care how up or down you are. I'm going to talk a guy about a guy that went to the Division I World Series, Mr. Sylvester. Everybody knows how big a plate is, right? How wide? 17 inches. 17 inches. we got black on both sides, right? How big is the black? One inch each side. We're up to 19 inches. How wide is a baseball? Okay, we'll call one baseball off each plate. We got 19 and 6, right? That's 25. How wide is the catcher's mitt? Come on, how wide is the catcher's mitt? The normal catcher's mitt's 11 inches. By book rule. 11 and 11. That's 22. 25 is how big? 47. 47 inches. That's how wide your strike zone is, my friend. That catcher sticks that ball and doesn't move, and he's right off the edge of the plate. That's a strike all day. Now, however, if he does this, you just told everybody in the ballpark it's a ball. You're trying to sweep in a strike. He sticks that pitch off the plate, and it's right there. Call it a strike. What did Dick Kittle say? Strikes and out, you go home. Balls and safe, you stay. You get paid by the game, not by the hour. Guys, any questions? <laughs> yes, sir. Sullivan's Oval, okay? Which we love Sullivan's Oval games because they never get completed games and you're done early. However, the bases are all over the place. Nothing's anchored. Field might, the conditions are horrible. He just asks as the umpire, what are you supposed to do? Well, first of all, you're not a grounds crewman. If they can't anchor the bases, we're going to put them in the vicinity. If the kid slides in and the base goes out to center field 90 feet, he's in the vicinity, you're going to call him safe. If he's not in the vicinity, you're going to call him out. Okay? You've got to live with the field conditions the way they are. However, you've got swimming pools and everything else around there, or you've got the possibility of somebody getting hurt. Once you take the lineup cards, now the field is yours. Until that time, it's up to the local site director or the athletic director or the head coach. They can call or say play. If you think it's unsafe, I don't have a problem. Do the first pitch, we're done. The field conditions, problem. Don't be afraid. You've got a rule book behind you. You've got a group behind you. No, I'm just talking about first base is 95 feet, third base is 62 feet, and second base is as I said, different zip code. You talk to the head coach and say, hey, where's your field guy? Where's your site administrator? This has got to get taken care of before we start. And if it means you get a late fee before you start, before the grounds crew gets there, 
Any other questions? Yes, please. Yes, sir. Got a close play at first base. A little louder. A close play at first base. They're swipe back or pull forward. I've seen some umpires check with the plate umpire before actually making their call. But then some guys make the call first. They go nuts. All right, let me ask hey, one question. The question is a slight tag at first base or the foot comes off the bat. What's the proper mechanic? My first question is going to be is there other playing action going on on the field? No other playing action? Just the play. Partner and make the call. Especially if it's a foot off the bat. If you're straight lined on the play, let's say you're the first base and I'm, I'm the umpire. And I can't tell whether your foot's on the back because you came out for the long stretch and maybe your foot, there is air between your foot and the back. Partner, what do you got? Is he on the bag or off? That's the key thing you want to ask. Is he on or off? He was on, Greg. You make the call because it's your play. Not him. You make the call. Question. How about, and how, just to, how about the swipe pad? The swipe pad? Same thing. That's a pet peeve of mine. Just listen to this for one second, guys. He just asked about the swipe tag rather than the foot coming off the bat. It's a pet peeve of mine. I get paid the same amount of money as you. I'm a plate guy, you're a base guy. I'm working with Louie. Louie comes to me and says, Greg, you got a swipe? You got a tag or not? Let me ask you a question. Who's closer to that play the base guy or the plate guy? <coughs> base guy. So why are you coming to me? My comment is going to be, he's going to edit this. Fuck you, pay me. You want me to make your calls? Pay me to make your calls. Move your ass, hustle, stay focused, and get in position to make that swipe call. That's not my job. Now, if you fall down or you stumble, that's a different thing. And you come to me and ask me, yeah, I'm going to help you out. Am I going to help you out during a regular game? Yeah, but you're going to hear about it in the parking lot. Because that's not my call. I got my own job to do. You got yours. Do it. That's what you get paid for. We get paid real good money here. $106 we're getting paid for a varsity game, seven innings. And I'll tell you something. I was a fill-in in a double A, the Atlantic League, double A. You know what I got paid? This was five, six years ago. I got paid $92 to do a minor league game. You're getting paid 106 to do seven. Okay? Hustle, stay focused, do your job. That's all we ask. Again, you got a good board here. You got a lot of good people behind you. Do the right thing. They're gonna stand behind you like a brick wall. Decide to be a rogue, a rebel, and do it on your own, or I got my own ideas what I'm going to do? Nah. Have a good season.